Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. And this week's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor to your brand or business and optimize for every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated, optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Whether you're just starting out and managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's start the show. We told you that we was going to do an episode um, where we just answer questions from our great listeners, man. Yep. You know, we've been around for 11 years. People have been listening to the Brilliant Idiots a long time. Uh, we don't feel like we give y'all enough, we don't feel like we give y'all enough, you know, time to answer y'all yeah. questions, man. I, I have a question before we start with theirs. Let's do it. You think that the assassination was an inside job? Had to be. But that's but that's what that's what should be so scary to people. Talk to me. It should be Talk so it should me. be so scary to people that that was allowed to happen. Yeah. And I think that people sit around and they say things like, you know, hey man, 70%, I think it was like 70% of Americans did not want a Biden-Trump rematch. I think the last month and a half has shown us why. We don't want the chaos. We don't want the confusion. I saw Bernie Sanders say some real shit. He was like, politics is supposed to be boring. Yeah. Uh, Barack fucked it up. Yeah, he made it too exciting, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah. by the way, Clinton in the 90s, JFK in the 60s, but they were still super solid politicians. Barack was a super solid politician, but Barack came in around the start of the new internet era where every, in, in, in America, not saying that we weren't always obsessed with celebrity, but we're so obsessed with celebrity now. And I say it all the time. Nobody believes, people believe everything except for the truth. You said something in that, that video you posted the, the last week. Mm -hmm. What do you even call those anymore? You don't turn your camera to the side. I don't know, a rant? A rant. Yeah. People really don't believe anything anymore. Yeah, we're like, desensitized to everything. Biden, first of all, Trump gets shot at. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fake. That stage. He set that up. Yeah. Biden drops out. Okay, that's fake. That stage. He's actually He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Like, we don't believe anything anymore. So when I take a step back and I look at what the truth to the situation is, mm -hmm. somebody allowed that to happen. That doesn't happen. A 20-year-old kid is not sophisticated enough to get into an event, climb up on a roof, and get a shot off 150-plus yards away from the President of the United States of America. That's with a, a bunch of people pointing at him, yeah. with a bunch of people saying, do y'all not see that right there? And that's what should scare us, Schultz. It should scare us that somebody says to themselves, I don't like this guy, the former president, he got to go. He got to go. So I don't. If, if I'm Trump, I don't. I don't have my chest out. If I'm Trump's followers, I don't have my chest out. Who's if, saying that though? That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Who's saying what? Who's saying that? Who's making that call? Mm -hmm. Oh, to, to, take, to try to take him out? I don't know. You want to hear some crazy shit? Okay. That kid who has no social media at all. What? Oh, it gets crazier. That kid has no social media. I didn't okay. know that. Uh, he was a. Registered Republican, apparently, but also donated yeah. to the Democrats. And he was in an ad. He was in a Republican ad. No, he was in a BlackRock ad. I thought that was a, Rep that was a Republican No, BlackRock's just a uh, hedge fund. I mean, okay, okay. They probably lean Republican because gotcha. they allow them to keep more money. But what was a pro Trump ad, though, right? No, no, no. It was just a BlackRock ad about a teacher that was going into retirement. What that teacher taught is, uh, you know, skills for retirement funds, I think. Got gotcha. you. That BlackRock ad was done a couple of years ago. That BlackRock ad was produced by our good friend Ryan Ling. Get the fuck out of here. Ryan. The guy who created Guy, guy Code. Code. He does the social media stuff for BlackRock. It's like one of his, I you know, know he's, that. he's a producer, he, you know, does shows, he does a bunch of things, but that's one Shoot of the... To my guy, Ryan. Shout out to Ryan. Ryan wasn't there on the shoot. He was producing it, so he, you know, hired all the DPs he and the staff the and everything. <laughs> produced the shoot. 
Oh, that, well, I'm like, what? Suck, suck. <laughs> and what the fuck? I was speaking the other day. We were catching up, and he was like, uh, and he was like, you know, and the black rock was like, hey, we need like the kids' um, paperwork to do, you know, permission to slip and all that kind of shit, and we need all the footage we need to give it to the FBI so they could learn about this kid. And he's like, now this could be just because I know it happened, but I was looking at that kid's like uh, permission form. He goes, it's the creepiest handwriting I've ever seen. Oh, Ryan, cut it out. That's what he said, you bro. You felt that way if he didn't do, try to kill the president. He said that. He said that. He's yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. I'm thinking of this just because. Now, what's interesting is this kid is the, I'm going to use quotations right here, the perfect kid to do an assassination attempt without the country devolving into civil war. Because if he was like a diehard- a liberal, Jewish, migrant, Muslim. Oh my God! Not even that. Or just a liberal, just like a purple-haired lesbian yeah, liberal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then yeah. all of a sudden, the conservatives would be like, "Oh, it's war. They took out our guy. We have to go after." Him. But the fact that he donated to the Democrats, but he was a registered Republican. His, him, and his dad would shoot guns. He was like the exact middle person, and he had no social media footprint. What fucking twenty-year-old kid has no social media footprint? And if he donated fourteen dollars to Trump's saying. campaign, no, to Biden's campaign. No, I thought he said no, it was Trump. It, it was Biden. It was a back blue. Uh, yeah, so it was literally perfectly balanced. So neither side could claim that it was the other side's rhetoric, rhetoric that radicalized them. They didn't know where the fuck it came from. Mm -hmm. To me, that's like too perfect. You get them out of here without having this, the, the country devolve into utter chaos. No social media for a 20-year-old is crazy. Also, what you angry about? You're not getting bullied? Well, no, there was a video of him getting bullied. I saw that but video. But not cyber bullied? No, he getting bullied no, in person like the rest of us. Yeah, got he, was, he was getting old school bullied. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was getting old school bullied. The good kind. Yeah, yeah, the kind we respect. We respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. it up. That's the kind that makes fucking tech and tech tech stars. Facts. You know what I'm saying? He but, was getting kind the kind of bully that he should have created. You know, America's next great app. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just a crazy. It's just all the things about it are just I, crazy. So I, who who started started to cut? Who do you think takes him out? What organization? What people have that kind of power? I don't know, but that's why I don't think we should rush to say it's fake. Like, I, I I did not like that because if you rush to say it's fake, then you're not even going to try to use any critical thinking skills to see who the, where the fuck this shit came from. Who sent you? Do some investigation. Let's try to figure out what the fuck is going on because you want to know what the motives are, right? Because let's think about it like this. Re registered Republican, 20 years old, supported Republicans at one point, may not like this mag MAGA shit, may not like the rhetoric coming from Donald Trump, may feel like Donald Trump's rhetoric is so divisive that it is causing all these issues in the world. Like if you listen, if you are an American person and you listen to some of the things that come out of Donald Trump's mouth, you got to say to yourself, hell no, I don't want my country to go in that direction. But isn't that a gene? Like if you are the, the people, the, the, the puppeteers, and you have to pick somebody to go do it, mm -hmm. You would want to pick a Republican to do it because now the Republicans have to deal with infighting in the party. Is Trump too extreme and do Republicans not like him? You get potential division in the party, which you don't. You obviously get them to unify, but you don't get this animosity of the left for making that innocent kid a radicalized yeah. person based on the rhetoric. It's. I don't think it was, by the way, I don't think it was a professional hit and it was not Democrats. Number one, Democrats would way too cowardly to ever do something like that. And if they was going to try to take Trump out, they'd use a drone. They've done that shit before. With drones? They're not, that's old school. They're not putting nobody on a roof in 2024 to take a shot. Like, that's like... Son, who do you think killed Abraham Lincoln? That was the 30s. Yeah. Not even the 30s. What year was that? 1800s. 1866? Yes. Like that, but that's what I'm saying. That's old school. What? And it was 60... And it was a totally Second. different, it, the ideology of the parties was totally different at that time. The ideology of the parties is totally different now. The ideology of the parties changes all the time. But that's what my point, my point is 1800s, yes, I can see somebody smoking Democrats somebody. Democrats are, are capable of it. Not that's in 2024, I don't believe that. Bro, uh, they killed And them. they wouldn't do it that primitive is what I'm saying. Uh, they, th these, the, these politicians. Yeah, but look how good they did it. They did it in a way where no one they can trace it, it back. Good. They didn't do it good at all. Yo, mean, yo, yo, yo. Cut it out. The how guy, about this? How about this? How about this? How about put it like this. Hold, put it like this. If they wanted him gone. Yeah. He'd be gone. He'd be gone. Oh, Easily. Man. Yo, remember when Trump came in last time and he goes, I want private security. I'm not going to use the Secret Service. Chris, you wasn't here last week. Tell him. Tell them the, the, the theory you told me, because that was great. 
Which one? About what Trump's going to do now. Oh, yeah. oh, this is this is the play. He'll, if he gets elected, he'll say the Secret Service failed me. I'd ask for private service. They, you know, more protection or my own security. They failed me. And because of that, I'm disbanding the Secret Service and I'm bringing in Eric Prince and Black, uh, Black Rock to no. be... Blackwater. Blackwater, right. To be my private uh, version of security security and he'll expand it into basically his private army and that's when it's over y'all y'all like are so terrified about the end of democracy and all this other you can't you can't spew conspiracy (laughs) theories and get mad at this one this is great this ain't even conspiracy this I did. I could Prince, see Prince already right went on Twitter and said, "Yeah, I'd be happy I to take." You. I got yes. it. <laughs> this, this is I not conspiracy. You. This is <laughs> happening. These conversations are happening. And Trump was already saying he's shitting on the Secret Service right now. Right. No, but he's also very complimentary of the Secret Service when he did the RNC. Not no more. Not the last couple of days. Not really? since they put that young lady on the stand and made her the latest example of DEI. Thank God she's white. They. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. But why would she be the head of the Secret Service? Bro. Why would a woman ever be in that position? Please, I know. Up. I mean this sincerely. Can you like, please pull up the video? Because there's a nobody. At least I haven't seen. Is nobody. there a female four-star general? Like I'm just trying to tell. Schultz. No, no. I'm, I, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, when in history have women been in the roles of violent protection? Tell me when in history, outside of Joan of Arc, that women have been in the roles of violent protection. Is Solange, there a four-star Solange knows when she defended Beyonce in the elevator <laughs> you right. against Jay Z. Nah, you right. That was violent protection. You right. And I, I don't want it. women in the head of violent protection. I don't want that. Listen, I, was, so you, I guess you don't want a woman president because she'll have the top no, role. No, 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 because she'll hire like women do. She'll hire a man for violent protection. You hire men for violent protection. Nobody in history has ever said, hire me a woman to violently protect me. No one in history has ever said that. No one in history. Hey, listen, he, he ain't wrong when he it's, right. It's a Marvel <laughs> idea. I'm the not saying Dora that Dora Mahaj or whatever the fuck that shit is. The Dora Milaj. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah. Marvel idea. Uh, Kadda- but that's not America. Gaddafi Kadda- Kadda- had no, an elite female bodyguard. No, he didn't. All right. He had But that's not America, though. Say yeah. I guess you should say American history. No, you, he didn't. You he can't didn't. point And also, to what the- happened to Gaddafi? They stormed his motherfucking castle because he had these outside painting their fucking nails. Wow. And no, wow. You know what happened to Gaddafi? They do, da, 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 da. Yeah, once again, if they want you, they, <laughs> they going to get you. Facts, but he was he was getting a little loose. They have you know what it is on Gaddafi? Huh? You know what it is on Gaddafi? Big right. Hell. All right. Big <laughs> okay. Your girl. Okay. Your so, girl. So who would you go to if you really wanted to take... Uh, that's all I'm Same saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's Same all I'm saying. saying. He, Yo, listen. The real C's you got to worry about <laughs> oh my God! Real C's you gotta worry about. Listen. No disrespect to the Crips out there in LA. No disrespect to the Crips here in New York. But the real C's you gotta worry about are them Clintons. Listen, because no. those Clintons, when they get to sea walking, hey, ooh, we smoking today. Hey, we not, are hey, smoking hey. today. No, no C's. May not do a lot of cripping, but they've done a whole lot of clipping. Allegedly. <laughs> yes, they do. Allegedly. This shit is, this is the shit. Look at this. Talk over. Oh, you just the video. This is it. Nobody's talking about this. Rewind it, Taylor. Yeah. Look at this one. I'm about to say, look at the woman in the shades. Yeah, there's two. <laughs> look, look at how she keeps trying to put her gun away. Go back, Taylor. Let me let me set this don't up before Joe when... watches it. Listen, don't... I know. This woman. I know. Kept trying to put her gun what's, away what's and the, couldn't do it. What's the first line of the, the roast? Yeah. I don't remember. Fa- uh, was something faster than a, a woman, uh, than a lady, uh, than a lady cop could fumble her fire? Fumble gun? Yes. She yeah. couldn't put her gun away. But also, why are you putting your gun away? <laughs> the president just got shot at. Sorry, Everybody sorry. else got their guns out, including the other lady standing next to you. Why are you trying to put your gun away? You don't hire women for violent protection. Why are you oh, saying there's the women's okay, security, okay. though? Okay. Say again? There's that, women's security. There ain't no women's security. Is there's that, women's security in TSA. Yeah, because and... you're not allowed to touch a woman as a man. A man can't pat down a woman to see if you got bombs now, on you. They will, have to hire women to do that. I will say this. There is some women that'll smoke your ass from 500 feet away, yo, 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 those marksmen. I, I'm not saying that women are not capable of shooting people. Yes, they are, 100%. But never in history has anybody hired women for violent protection. You need someone to protect your child. Mm-hmm. Are you hiring a woman? Yes. 
That's what nannies and babysitters are all about. Charlemagne. <laughs> you said protection. Now, you said no, violent protection. You said is feed, play with, change their diapers. That's protection. But you said violent protection. Violent protection. I don't mind a female security if they got a gun. Charlemagne. I don't. I've seen you with security guards <laughs> for the last ten years. I ain't never seen a girl with heels walk into no, this I've, shit. I've had, I've had, I've had, a, I've had, I've had a couple of women. Not just the woman, though. <laughs> <Stink>. <laughs> not just the woman. You need a man to protect her. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, not just the I'm woman. I'm not saying. Listen, there are certain things. Violent protection. Let me ask you something. Wait, what's this? Is not bad at all. <laughs> it's not bad. This is facts. Violent I don't protection. Think, I mean, this is a good discussion. I don't think Yo, that. do you hire a six foot dude to play center? In the day's NBA, you can get away with that. No, you can't. You don't hire a six foot dude to play center because that's not what they do. They don't play center. By the way, they play point guard. The, the, the reason you can not really, you can't really debate on this subject is because she just got fired. And this video, I thought when this shit first happened, I was like, what is she doing? She, she could knows. not put her gun away. But my thing is, why are you putting your gun away when the president just got shot what at? What does a woman know about a roof? Oh, my God. You cannot. <laughs> they never built a roof. They never roofed it. They you never put the shingles that, on. They don't do even that. clean the shit out the gutter. You got a man got to go do that's that. That's not true. Somebody told me, and, and, and I don't know if this is How true. How often y'all seen a woman take the leaves out the gutter? It's not the point. I've never seen it once. But that I've never mean seen a woman happen. on a roof. If a woman was on that a roof, mean she's happen. escaping her husband. Taylor, that doesn't you, mean it doesn't happen. She's escaping her husband. That doesn't mean it doesn't survival. happen. By the way, I don't think there's too many women who would want a violent job. They don't That's what I'm want saying. those I, I, jobs. I don't think they would. I, there's not too many men who want this shit. Like, I don't think there's too many women who would say, you know what? I want to be a professional security guard that has, might have but to kill people for a these girls questioning everything. They are starting to only fan some more. Oh, my God. <laughs> they questioning everything they've ever done in their life right now. They're like, I didn't think this shit would really happen. I, exactly. I I I felt like, and by the way, I felt like that about the whole secret service. Yeah. They all was like, oh shit. The fuck? It's like all of their training. This is what we for were real? training for. For real? Oh, they really still doing this in 2024? Yeah. Like, I don't think that they ever no. thought a president would get shot at. No. Ever. That's why it was also a while when Trump jumped up and was like, fight, fight, fight. Fight who? You don't even know who shot at you, I was bro. the bravest shit I ever seen, bro. <laughs> Judging on American history, where there are multiple shooters at every single assassination. But that's what made it stupid. It was Secret dumb. Service, you're supposed to keep them down. That's why I thought they were in on it. And I was like, why are you letting this motherfucker they do it? They probably were, show. That's my whole point. Somebody, this, this is what I keep talking about when I keep Good talking dick. about the dangerous Good rhetoric. dick. What? You can flip them female security. <laughs> <laughs> you can flip them female secret service with good dick. But that's what I keep talking about when I keep talking about dangerous rhetoric. <laughs> where Trump has, no, it, Trump has created a political environment that he's not even safe in. I don't think Nobody he's created is. it. I don't think he's created it. A hundred percent. I we've never seen it like that. You, oh, you, you have to show me. Clearly, we've seen it like it. JFK's brains are all over Dallas for a reason. But JFK didn't. Act, JFK wasn't out here telling motherfuckers to to fight. Yo, there was a, the governor of Montana. You right, the CIA was shutting them down. That, how that? That's threatening, though. How that threatening rhetoric that causes political violence. He threatened their jobs and Bro, their control. And Donald, their Donald Trump literally said one time when he was talking about keeping Hillary Clinton out of the office, and he was like, "If she gets on and adds Supreme Court judges, there's nothing you can do." And then he goes. Or well, there is something you two A people can do. When the governor of Montana slammed the reporter, he said that shit. Yes, that's when, crazy. When the governor yeah. of Montana, nah, that's crazy. When he the can't say that shit. When the governor of Montana slammed the news reporter, he was like, "That's my type of guy." Yeah. You know, January sixth, his supporters were literally out there chanting to hang his vice president, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence. It's like, yo, come on, man, come on, like, like. It's like at some point we got to stop. We, let's discuss the Yo, whole. Why is the Secret Service in a suit? I don't think that that's like the most efficient outfit to like protect somebody in. They don't look ready for war. Yeah, I want you. I want you dressed up like one of them Dagestani wrestlers. But there's military out there too, though. That's the other thing people don't realize. There, there are military. The guys on the I roof like got that. on the boots and the I fatigues like that. and the t-shirts. The guy that took the dude out, he looks like he's ready for action at any given time. I like that. I like that. I don't like the Secret Service look, though. I do think they need to update it. Like, this shit look like... <laughs> Wait, it, look, it look comical. It look like The Matrix. Yeah, it looks like a caricature <laughs> of what the Agent Secret Service Smith. should be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's kind of fire. It, but you can't do that Agent Smith shit. That's true. 
Like, I, I think we need a completely different look, more threatening. Well, violence <laughs> protection. Trump's version of the SS Nazis is on the way. Wait, what is that? The Secret Service? <laughs> yeah, his version. That's the, the first time I've ever heard of them calling it the SS, by the way. SS Nazis. This is the first time. It's been the Secret Service my entire life, and now all of a sudden they the SS. SS Nazis. Not that Nazi. <laughs> His version is on the way, bro. I just think we got. I just think everybody's. We gotta. We gotta start believing things, even if you don't want to believe it. Just take it for what it is. Why would we want this to be fake, Chris? What do you Bye. think? What do you think happened? You think it was an inside job? I think it's. Uh, what's the term you said before? Oscams? No, Oscams razor. I think it is. No, Hanlon's. What is Hanlon's razor? Oscams razor is basically. Son, a, if when I. Bring Hanlon's razor up. I'm gonna need you to denounce your Asianness. Okay, that's some Asian shit. Hanlon's razor. Never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity. I think Oscom's razor is literally the exact same thing. Uh, what is Oscom's razor? Oscom's razor is let the dick hit the back ball in the throat. Why do all the people got razors? Anyway, violence protection. <laughs> I think it's. I've 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 honestly looked at it from a million different angles and analyzed video and done everything everybody else is. I think it's an autistic, mentally ill kid who got a, a, a automatic weapon and tried to take out somebody. I think he well, could. How did nobody stop him? He was well, on a roof. It's not whether it's not why he wants to. Do it. There are threats against presidents every single day. Right. Every day, someone's trying to kill the That's president. That's right. Right. And there is a an elite. What we thought was an elite institution that executes at the highest level to right. ensure the, the protection of president. We were all terrified when Barack Obama was accepting the... His, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. When I he won, yo, I'm going to tell you when I got scared, when he did, they did the motorcade and he got out the car, him and Michelle and walked. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh my God. Oh, my, yeah. So well, let, let, let's, let's back it up. So this is my understanding of it. The kid comes. It's, what's not clear to me is, is his rifle... In plain view, how's he carrying the rifle? And I, I don't say this to gaslight the situation, but honestly, is a white guy with a rifle something that's never been seen before at a Donald Trump rally? No. I, I don't know what the answer is to that. I do think, Chris, Chris, you I, can't take you can't a, rifle a rifle onto the grounds. But he's not on the grounds, though, right? Yes, he was. He's outside of he's the outside ground. Of the ground. He's outside I'm of saying, the ground. It has... Because I thought I that at first, too. I was like, how did he even get in with the so gun? So here's the thing. So he's outside of the perimeter? Yeah. But AOC even said... Why she she said when she was interrogating the uh what what was her face the Peter Griffin looking chick what's her name the Secret Service yeah Kim Cheadle when she was when she was interrogating her she was like why if if an AK forty seven's range is three hundred feet or whatever AR fifteen AR fifteen's range is then that should have been the range why yeah. wasn't that the range and this is the most common automatic weapon in America. Right. Why wasn't that the protective range of this? And the, the, the chick didn't have an answer. I mean, that is a, it's a great fucking question. And yeah, it's an amazing question. Like, what the fuck? No, I think what happened is they didn't want to add more personnel. So it's like, hey, we make the range for the, the amount of personnel we have. And then the other authorities that were there, the local police, they were supposed to cover that outside. I heard range. that, too. And I, it made me wonder, do just, former presidents get less Secret Service than current presidents? I, mean, I think they do. Yeah, that's because that, that's the only reasoning less. for that. I didn't know that local law enforcement does that. Other thing, too, I have the video. Does he have the gun while he's climbing up the building? That I don't know. Well, there's no video See, of him climbing up the building. I saw a video of him, like... Pulling himself up on the building. Really? Yeah, it was these kids. Uh, it was because he was got pointing at him like, "Yo." So you got guys pointing at him. Yeah, Thirty saw, minutes I in to, to, him. to local authorities, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, "He's got a gun. He's got a gun." And then my understanding is one of the local cops, policeman, pops his head up. Kid points the points gun at the, the policeman. The policeman jumps down, down. Or, or goes down because I think he was on the shoulders of another right. cop. Yeah. And then he immediately turns around, and takes the shots at Trump. Because then, then my mind pivots to the shot of the two snipers. They took them out immediately. But, they but you can there. see, you can see the guy like standing. It's yeah. like he almost can't believe what he's seeing. He, it, but now I also empathize with him because right. it felt very human to me. Because here's yeah. the thing: it's not, it's not only human; it's political. 
do I do this? Because if it's but, but, not but the right call... Ex exactly. That's the thing. You don't know if the dude right. has a gun or not. You just see somebody on a roof. Now, there are other people that are on other structures. There's probably people hanging on right. trees. Like, there, anybody to get a seat, anybody to look. If you go to a, a game at, at, uh, at Fenway, there's people on top of other buildings that are watching the game. Anybody who can see. So you see this dude on the top of the roof, and in that moment, you're going, am I about to kill a migrant? And then this whole campaign is over. We're just killing right. innocent migrants that just want to watch Trump. So you can't believe it. You're holding your breath. You're like, what the fuck is it's, going it's on? It's like there? literally he has he doesn't trust what he's seeing yeah. through the scope. He wants so his like, own eyes to see it. And then he's like, fuck, that guy's got a yeah. yep. gun, ducks down, and they game over. Took him I, out. But I heard there was so I, why he ain't did no interviews. I don't know. The guy who but, did that kill shot. I heard there thing. was ten minutes in between when the people notified the local I think police. It was like two or three. No, they oh, said I, it was they said it was they said it was five. Thirty. Yeah, Trump wasn't even on stage. They, they saw him, they saw this kid walking the grounds and stopped him because he had a rangefinder. Yeah. If you see somebody at an event with a rangefinder, how can you hide an AR-15 though? Bye. Probably, I would say, in his leg. If you have baggy pants, you could just have it. But but that means he was in the event? Yeah. No, he's outside, outside of the perimeter. perimeter but there still oh. is local law enforcement outside of the perimeter. And remember, this is so a very pro-Second Amendment crowd. They yeah. might not, like, that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to gaslight, but, like, they really... It, bro. So they saw him early. They saw him. They label him as suspicious, but not a threat. I don't get it. Here, here's my thing, and I don't think any of us know the answer. If there was a force that was behind this... You don't send one 20 year old kid in no. plain sight to climb no. up on a roof in front of everybody. That's, that's to do all it. I'm saying. And when Trump stands up and gives the fist, that's when you. That's when you. It's another shot. So you want to take I one? I think it's exactly what it seems like. I think this kid was mentally ill. He had a gun. And the they said he was slip. Googling. I mean, what do I know what he was really Googling, right? Like, we're just trusting what we're giving us. But I do think in, this, in a historical scope, if Trump had been killed, it would be such a cataclysmic event in America that you know that going in and you don't send. It was almost, you know, like a kid in plain sight just climbing a ladder in front of everybody and then like. Nobody wants that. If Trump would have got killed, it would have been complete. I think it was just anarchy. a security failure and a, and a mentally ill kid. She's, um, she's was, giving the signal. I think it was a bad communication between Yo, local question. law enforcement yeah. and Secret Service. That's really question. what it was. Is our, our assassination attempts so prevalent and thwarted so often that simply reducing the amount of security and allowing there to be a roof to be on that was close enough to kill Trump but outside of the protected range almost guaranteed that someone would try? Meaning... Because this kid cased the the place. Yeah, like he, he came, he was he looking, the, he, he was doing the day before and earlier the same day. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like I wonder if every single time a president's about to talk, there's some fucking mentally ill person that's gonna try. But because of the way that they protect the situation, they just can't get in. They try, they're like, fuck, there's no way to do it. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe it's so common that people do this. It's almost like leaving a wallet with cash on the street. Somebody's gonna go pick it up. And in this situation, they could plead uh, ignorance. They could plead, you know, they were just horrible at their job. They could plead whatever they want. You can't prove that they made someone do it, but they created and allowed a scenario where it was doable. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think I think if you look at it historically, yeah. like I was reading about Queen Victoria in England the other day, mm -hmm. there were like five assassination attempts against her. Yeah. Like... No, oh, every president has... You know, generally throughout history, assassination... President guys, is the most dangerous job right. in the world. And we, do we, we do you know where about. the term assassin comes from? It's actually very interesting. Yeah. Hashashin. And that was a group of assassins that lived in the mountains of Syria, and you could purchase their services by paying them in their body weight in hash. That's the only payment they took. And you would pay them in hash, no matter who you were. They would come down from the mountains of Syria into, like, you know, present day Lebanon, Israel, what have you, take out whoever you paid them for. They were like sneak up on you with knives and then go back and they had a mountain retreat and hashashins eventually over time became assassins. Wow. wow. That's fine. Jesus Christ, you need to do Jeopardy, Chris. <laughs> like he be knowing all these random fucking facts. So they've always been dangerous Muslims. Like, can we just acknowledge that? <laughs> this might, well, hold on, is this, we pre, this might be pre-Islam, I'm not sure. No, I think it's 12th century, they would have been Muslim, yeah. <laughs>
Wow. Let's do some I asking did. idiots, man. That's yeah. what we here for. We here for some asking idiots. We told the listeners we was gonna give them something. Damn, we should pay some bills and probably come back and really get into asking idiots. Let's do it. All right, guys, let's take a break for a second because I gotta make sure your cocks are tough. Okay, the best like way to have a stiff prick, a one that a woman deserves. Think about everything women go through in summer, wearing a sundress around Manhattan, walking over subway grates, dress fl you know, flying up in the air. There's some homeless guy whacking off in a corner, sitting on a Pepsi can. It's insanity in these streets, just like every single city in the entire country and also the world. And you know what these girls deserve when they're walking around, they're dealing with all that nonsense, their fresh pedicure gets stepped on by a skateboarder. They deserve the best dick you've ever given them in your entire life. And how are you going to deliver that? It's with the chew. Blue chew, same active ingredient since I Viagra Sayalis. But this is the chew. It's the one that we blow the backs out with. And you're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. You go to bluechew.com, use the promo code IDIOTS, and you have the best dick of your entire life to deliver to whomever you want. Okay? Whomever is willing is most important, but also that you want. I love you. I hope you love them. Bluechew.com. Promo code idiots. Let's get back to the show. Listen, the problem with the uh, pre-prepared meal services is the, the quality, man. The quality is just not there. Most of the quality is not there. And uh, honestly, like the freshness a little bit. And uh, Cook Unity has completely solved that. It's absolutely amazing. Okay. Cook Unity has an incredible system. First of all, they have chefs that ha are award-winning. We have award-winning chefs, and they're all throughout the country. It's not like there's just one place that it's happening. They have them all throughout the country. So you're getting it fresh. You're also getting it from these chefs. And each package has a QR code with like the picture of the chefs. You can learn more about them. It, you actually know who's making your food. You know a lot of times which restaurant it is coming from. It's a fantastic idea. Cook Unity is brilliant, and they have uh, so many. So like the selections are, are incredible. I, I can't begin to say. Come on in, Charlotte. I can't begin to say enough amazing things about Cook Unity. Obviously, it's been incredible for my wife and I. We just had the baby. So cooking time is limited, so we've been able to get the Cook Unity meals, and it's just been incredible. But the fact that they are fresh and they are from these award-winning chefs, and you can actually learn about who's making your food, there's nothing compares to it. So what I would recommend for you, if you want high-level culinary taste, you want the prices to stay low, you want locally sourced meals from these award-winning chefs, then you go to cookunity.com slash idiots or enter the code idiots before checkout and you get 50% off your first week. Listen, your food arrives fresh, never frozen in packaging that keeps meals fresh in the fridge up to seven days. Cook Unity packaging is compostable, recyclable and reusable. So all you people out there that are very concerned when ordering takeout, how much waste is there, that's not happening with the Cook Unity. So you're hitting it on all levels. You can experience chef quality meals every week delivered right to your door that are fresh, okay, and are concerned about the environment when you go to cookunity.com slash idiots or enter the code idiots before checkout for 50% off your first week. That's 50% off your first week by using the code idiots or going to cookunity.com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. This is what we're here for, man. Uh, we told y'all that we were gonna do an episode where we really just devoted it to asking idiots. Um, Talk to us. Let's see what's happening. Carrie Amazing says, Hannah, okay, Hannah underscore M.B says, if C to God ran for press, who would be his VP? Man, let's get back to being serious in America. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. Like, let's get back to being serious. Like, I'm really with Bernie Sanders, but I'm like, let the politicians be, be the boring. politicians. Let them be boring. Like, let's get back to that. So to answer your question, who would be my VP? I don't fucking know. I, I just don't even think these are hypotheticals even. Who the I fuck love the pod. Who would be yeah. your VP? Show I would never want to run for press. I have no interest in politics. Man. But, uh. I have interest in politics, but not to run. No, no. Yeah, yeah. No interest in being a politician. But, Charlotte, everything you said about we don't want the old politicians is why you should get a non-politician. Yeah, but you got all of these new people that don't necessarily think like politicians, even though they are. I think Governor Shapiro represents that. I think Governor Whitmore represents that. I think Governor Westmore in Maryland represents that. I think people like Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett represent that. Hell, even on the Republican side, I think Nancy Mace represents that. Like, these are people who are 
young enough to get it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Governor Shapiro didn't have to listen to Meek Mill and wallow in all of them when they was trying to do probation reform and criminal justice reform and the Clean Slate Act in Pennsylvania. He didn't have to listen to Michael Rubin then, but he did. You know, he come, he was an attorney general. But did, why did he, was he trying to sign him to, you know, exploitive record deals or something like that? What you mean? <laughs> no, oh, he, t he tells the story. Michael Rubin came to him right. and was like, you need to look into this Meek Mill situation. Yeah. He's when he was attorney general. He was like, why? Yeah. And so when he started looking into it, he started to see the injustices. Of course, we now see how corrupt the judge was, yeah. all of that type of stuff. So he was right to get involved, but he didn't have to. Yeah. But because you have somebody like Michael Rubin, who's culturally competent and can use somebody like Meek Mill's celebrity to open up a bigger discussion, which creates legislation that doesn't just benefit a privileged celebrity, it benefits everybody in Pennsylvania. Right. I like that type of shit. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of people... I want to. I want in office people that are willing to listen to folks they normally wouldn't listen to. Because we always we're, t we're having these discussions about, you know, politicians that are different. No, you need politicians that are willing to listen to people that they don't normally listen to. Because clearly, what are we seeing now? They listen to donors. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They I don't care what nobody say. Biden's up out of here because of the donors. Yep. They I yank, don't care what y'all say. The bread. The polls, sure. Oof. But really the donors. Chris, when the donors tell you we're not donating another red cent, and if he don't tell he don't step down, God damn. See you later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It certainly puts a lot of pressure on. Two like, weeks, two. I think it, it didn't, he didn't last two weeks. Since watching after all that. those motherfuckers switch up on him, bro. Clooney switched up on him. Was Rock it Matt? Switched up on him. Clooney had every, everybody was mad at Clooney. He had every right to be able to do that. Talk to me. He, he had the Raised largest, yeah. first of all, he's always a big donor to Democrats, but he just had the largest single event to raise the most money for Democrats ever. Yeah. $27 million. If I raise $27 million for you, you goddamn right, I'm going to talk my shit. But why would he raise the money for somebody who obviously wasn't fit to do the job? Because he's probably clearly a guy who been riding for the blue for a long time. Got it. Got it. And that was probably the first time he saw the president up close in so long. Mm. That's what I would think. And he was, like, okay. he was like, damn. And also, you got to remember that as much as I understand it, Biden positioned the debate among donors as, listen, I know you have concerns. All right. I, I'm coming That's through. Right. I'm going to come here and put it down and you won't have concerns anymore. And right. he didn't do that. So, mm. you know. Right. It's fair. He showed us that dick didn't work. Right. There's one thing to hear about the dick not working. But then see it. See it. Oof. God dang. Anyway, um, okay, here's one. Carrie Amazing, would you would people vote for an AI candidate over a human? Yes. This is actually quite interesting. Why do you think yes? Because of the world we live in. No. Shit, y'all argue with bots all day now. That's true. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you got to prompt AI. So it's still somebody that's controlling the AI. Here's my, here's my issue with the uh, AI president, assuming that you didn't have to prompt them. AI is a collection of all the data that's out there. So it's just synthesizing everything and then making a decision based on that. Uh, how do you give it a moral compass? How do you give it a code? Like, and then maybe that's where you're talking about the prompts, but like you have to give it some sort of directive. And then whatever that directive is, is going to be how it makes its decisions. So, yeah, I, I don't think that AI is exactly what people think it is, where it's kind of like thinking for itself. It's just digesting all the data and information that's out there and then regurgitating it. In yeah. theory, it could be very democratic because all it's going to do is give you well, well, the sum well, of well, well, every Republican Chris, and Democrat. Chris, 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 Chris. Or it will give you the sum of the loud minority that yap online all the time. Ours is going to give well, you but what's your source material? Is it presidential libraries? Is it oh, biographies? Yeah. Is it autobiographies? So, 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 is so it this news is articles? Like, and now we're deciding what the source material is. Right. If th this is actually a kind of cool question. Because now it has access to all the classified stuff that we don't know and see. The other this is wrong is, meta AI and chat GPT are, bro. Wait, right. what do you mean? Like regularly? Just regularly wrong. Yeah, like, because like, it's just going off of data that's out there and the data's wrong. I've been, pra I've been practicing on both of them just to see. Like they're so wrong with shit. Like, yeah. like when I say unbelievably wrong, like 
And like I always say, I use me as a reference because I know the truth. <laughs> About you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just like. Oh, this is fun. G give me a question to ask it. He's on great. board with AI now. Remember when he was on I'm the not, pot? Because it's too much misinformation. But you're using it. You I'm using you it because I want to see what the future is and I want to know what everybody else is going to be using, right? Like, oh man, there's, there's a, put it like there's a company that I Googled. I Googled what was the origins of the company. And it was telling me like my wife founded it. And you know, you be sitting in the room like, she have it's something Tell going me. on that I don't fucking know about. Give me, give, <laughs> give me a question to ask it. Ask it. What, what do you which one are you on? Um chat GPT. A, a, ask uh, what is car ask what is Carviva Wellness? Hey, what is Carviva Wellness? How do you spell Carviva? K-R-B-I-B-A Wellness. Oh, okay. K R K K A R uh -huh. B I B A wellness. Do you mind having this on the box? It's okay. Oh. Okay. Carbiba wellness, often associated with wellness resorts around Lake Cariba, focuses on providing a relaxing and rejuvenating experience through various wellness facilities and activities. Something else. Hold on, let me something. Else. Carbiba wellness beverages. I'm sorry. Gosh, I was <laughs> like, what? Carbiba well. What is Carbiba Wellness Beverages? What is Carbiba Wellness Beverages? Why don't you just type it? You talk in the phones? Yeah. I only talk to the Really? And then I have it read back to me. At like 2x speed. I mean, they're they're like um uh audio is so much better. Carbiba Wellness Beverages, marketed under the name. Kariba Premium Water? No. Sorry. Let me type it in, bro. Okay. <laughs> this shit is hard. <laughs> uh, let me see. Oh, because you put in Carbiba. I don't know what that fuck that shit is. You got it. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Jesus Christ, Andrew. What the fuck do you be typing on your phone? Well, what came up? Every time I try to type it, it, it says it changes it. To what word? Karina. Maria. God damn. Hold on. God damn. How do you spell it? K A R B I B A. Because it's fucking Andrew's phone. It's my fault. Oh, see, now see, this is accurate. Let's see. When this is this is accurate. See, chat GPT words. But see, I did this before and it said something. It said, it, it said that, but it said my wife. <laughs> That's my girl Angela. Salute to Angela Zing. I was like, what the fuck? Salute to Angela. Yes. See, that's accurate. See, maybe it changes. Maybe, maybe if you ask enough questions, maybe because it does do that sometimes, right? You'll ask questions. What and did tell you Andrew submit Schultz's feedback. parents do for a living? Hedge funders. No. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. This would be crazy. Will you use chat? Yeah, chat GPT. Oh my God, this is incredible. It's Andrew talking. Schultz's father, Larry Schultz, worked as a reporter and was a military veteran. His mother, Sandra Cameron, was a professional ballroom dancer and owned the Sandra Cameron Dance Center in Lower Manhattan for over three decades. Yeah. Yo, that's fucking awesome. When I typed it in, in Gemini, I got Andrew Schultz's father, Robert Schultz, is a businessman. His mother's name is Susan Schultz. She's a homemaker. You typed wow. my name last wrong. No, I got it. Well, that isn't even fucking close. Which one do you use? I use ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Um, uh, open AI. Is this the right one? This one, just let me see. This one with the this fucking logo? No. Nah. Oh, so see, I might got some bullshit. See? The logo should look like this. Light. It almost looks like that. Empty. Now, there's, there's different types of... Send me uh, that one. So this was like the OG, the original one. Oh. I mean, there's there's different GPTs and like there's different GPTs for different things. So, for example, there's one that's actually good for like history and research. They say the chat GPT one isn't the good one for that. There's another one. I'm forgetting the name. But like that's one that you should do if you're actually trying to research, research historical facts. Oh. And it like lends itself to that more. OK. But also like here's the thing. it It's the knowledge for the AI comes from people. Well, no books, et cetera. Like it just reads the whole Internet. And if the books are false or manipulated or changed, right? History is won by the winners. So it's yes. AI is just going to know the version of history that we give it. So it's even more manipulatable. 
Like you can really change the future. I don't like that. Yeah. Because this is what people are going to be relying on. Yes. Yes. Like, like put it like this. I typed in the Charlemagne love Anguilla. This and what is, is on that? Meta AI. Yes, Charlemagne the God has expressed his love for Anguilla, a small island in the Caribbean. He has mentioned it in various interviews on social media, calling it his second home and a place where he finds peace and relaxation. Charlemagne has strong ties to Anguilla, as his grandmother was from the island. It's not true. <laughs> like, like, See, it's, they're just a little extra. And look, give me five jokes about homelessness. I cannot write jokes about homelessness. Would you like to write a different joke? But that's nah, morality nah. coming in with yeah, you. Yeah, but why are they asking? You can't be immoral? Nah. No, trying, it's trying. trying. This thing you were worried about, how it's going to ruin the world, it's trying uh, to be a little bit protected. All right, Taylor, let's scroll down. Let's see another one. It says Nyla is a general manager of the Black Effect Podcast Network. <laughs> Congrats. It's crazy. <laughs> Meta AI, I don't know about Meta AI is fucked up. Ooh, this oh, is the a good one, one I just sent you. That, That's the one. Me. Yeah, I need to Danny get on that one. Danny Unti, and pay for the premium version. What's the one show you love to watch but hate telling people you're into? Ooh, here's a show I love to watch, and actually I don't hate telling people that I'm into. Uh, the Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> That show is so fucking entertaining. It's unbelievable. It? Oh, my God. I mean, a lot of Real Housewives franchises are, though. Shout out to Joe and Melissa. I bumped into them out in the Hamptons and uh, very sweet people. But my wife was watching it while she was pregnant. And uh, when we first had the baby, she was home with the baby all day. And I just got, like, so sucked into these storylines. It was, like, unbelievable television. You're talking about, like, a real show where, like, a real family, the guy ends up going to jail, then extradited, he's separate. Like, there's all these, like, the drama that would happen in a scripted TV show that you have to suspend disbelief because you're like, it's fake, is happening in a real fucking show. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, there's no show that I love to watch that I hate people telling. Like, if I love a show, I can't You just let them know. Yeah. yeah. I like uh, Star Wars, the Acolyte, the new one. Oh, it's really good? No, nah, everybody's saying it's trash, but I like it. Star Wars <laughs> has jumped the shark, bro. That's what you see. That's what that I like. That shit is a rap. That's Star what I like Wars, telling people that. It's they're, over. They're like, you still watch Star Wars? I'm like, yeah, Man, I like nobody it. give a fuck about I ain't watched none shit, of them bro. shits. I ain't watched Mandalorian. I ain't watched, I think maybe I watched an episode or two, but I ain't watched none of those fucking shows. I watched the movies and then that was it. There's nothing on Star Wars that seems like unreal anymore. Um, the world seems more unreal than Star Wars. What you mean? Exactly what I said. There's nothing on traveling, Star Wars. They're traveling light speed to different universes. What does that mean? Nowadays. You, mean? you can't do that. Have you done any virtual reality? Have you ever rode the fucking Avatar ride at Universal Studios? I hate doing those VR rides. That shit is man. way flyer than watching a bunch of fake space wait, effects. Wait, 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 what you mean? What you when mean? you put that VR shit on and you on that shit and you can feel the... The, the dragon breathing or whatever the fuck they be riding on Avatar, you can feel the water splashing on you and you pick Star Wars. <laughs> what kind of kicks you get out of Star Wars? Chewbacca used to be something. Yeah. R2-D2, R2-D2. Yeah, that shit is trash, it, 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 bro. GPT. It's 10 times better than R2-D2. Get <laughs> the fuck out of here. Oh, doing absolutely I nothing. Mean, Scroll down, Taylor. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars need to step it up. That's why I hate telling people. CEO <laughs> underscore O, if you are in emotion, are creating one, what would you be? Easy call. Go. Stoicism. Is that an emotion? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a philosophy. A, it's a principle, a philosophy that's rooted in basically keeping your emotions in check. Okay. You know, um, even though it's very hard to do, or maybe it's not just being as biased and objective as possible, not being emotionally attached to anything. Uh. So therefore you're always just kind of observing things as they are. And as you see them, mm -hmm. which causes you sometimes to, you know, get in trouble, right? Because people want you to, they, there are certain things they feel like you're supposed to have a certain reaction to. No, mm. no. But what we do for a living, we need to emotionally react. That's what makes it so great. Do you? Or do you need to just sit back and be objective and be able to observe all angles of a situation. I think that it's no fun when you're sitting on TV and you know a person's ain't like, I know how JD Vance is gonna come about Trump. Yeah, that's boring. I know how this person's gonna come about Kyle. I wanna hear but, some real opinion. But they're not that's why we love yeah. John Stewart. Yeah, but yeah, but those guys even aren't operating emotionally. Like 
I love, at least with stand-up, is when you are speaking emotionally about something. Like you are, it is affecting you and you are sharing those feelings right or wrong. But you see, comedians are such a great example to use because they see things from all angles. Yes. You have to be in order to get the right joke. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So you need a certain amount of stoicism to hit, get the right yes. angle. But you also need a certain like emotional connection because we don't want to see people just do word problems. We want them to be passionate about the shit that they're saying up there. And that, but that's, I feel like we just got a bunch of people doing word problems. Yes. Actually, fuck problems. A bunch of word vomit. Vomit, yeah. People are just saying shit, putting yeah. shit together because it sounds good. It's like, what the fuck do they even mean? Then we spend hours going back and forth debating some shit that this person didn't even really believe yeah. in the first place. Nah, that's it. That's true. Sit back, objectively see some shit, give a proper opinion, you know, show me that you can see it from all... If, I don't trust people who can't see things from both sides, yo. Yeah, uh, 100%. I find them boring, predictable. Yeah. It's like, eh. I mean, the number one most interesting quality or engaging quality in a human being is not knowing what they're going to say next. That's right. It's like Mike Tyson is still beloved and famous to this day. And I think there's many different reasons to go into it. He's given us you know, these epic fights. But I think the thing is you never know what the fuck he is going to say next. Right. He could start crying in the middle of an interview, profess his love for God. He could say absolutely crazy shit when he's doing shit talk. Like you just never know what the fuck that guy is going to say next. Yeah. And because of that, anytime we see him, we watch. That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, Mark Shangley, what did he say? Oh, this is interesting. After Kendrick Drake and J. Cole, who do you see holding the torch of, for hip-hop in the next 10, 20 years? Is there a younger generation that you see eventually becoming th those three names? Is there anybody in the younger generation where you're like, yep, they got it. They're going to take it there. J.I.D. I don't know if he's... I think J.I.D. is more generation now. I mean, the problem... and it's, I, I don't know if it's a problem. It's going to be hard... There will be another generation, guaranteed. Hmm. I'm just not sure how it happens because in order to be one of those guys, there was a traditional system hmm. in place that rewarded you in a different way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like when we had Latoya Luckett on and she was just telling the whole story about you had to do talent shows. And then you had to get a manager. Getting a manager was the shit. Yeah. Then you had to get signed to a record label. Yeah. And then you had to actually get a producer that wanted yeah. to work with you. Yeah. And yeah. you had yeah. to find songwriters. So there was this whole process yeah. to become a superstar. Yeah. Kendrick, Drake, and Cole went through that whole process. Like, they went through the process. There's no process anymore. So I don't know what gets you... I don't know what gets you to that level in 2000. And also, like, groups are so segregated because... Radio isn't the predominant uh, listening place for music. Mm -hmm. It's harder for everybody to be listening at the same exact time to the same 10 or 20 artists. If you're into this specific type of country music, you could listen to that and you think it's the biggest music on the planet. But not everybody's, there's no, uh, what is it? What was that MTV show where you, the top? TRL. Uh, there's no yeah. TRL. Like, yeah. There's no show that lets us know these are the hits now that everybody's yeah. watching. That's right. So yeah, I could I could actually see there being way more successful artists. They're just not as famous. Yeah, I mean, shit. NBA YoungBoy is a great example of that, right? Huh. Uh, 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 Summer Walker is a great example of that. Somebody like Tank is a great example of that. Like these people have super cult like followers uh, yeah. who love them. You know, uh, it, it, at least Summer gets radio play. Tink don't get as much radio play as she should, even though she writes smash records. Yeah. They got gold plaques, platinum plaques. They selling out shows, but it's 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 not SZA. But yeah, SZA came through a system. different era. Yeah, you know what I'm system. saying? Yeah. Like yeah. she came through a system. And being young boy got like six, seven number one albums or something crazy like that. He at at one point he should have been one of the biggest. Yeah. Rap stars in the game. Yeah. And he probably was. Yeah. But did it feel like it? It wasn't ubiquitous. It, it's like my parents haven't heard of him. Yes. I always judge shit by if my folks have heard of the people. That's right. And my folks know who uh, Drake is. I don't know if they know about Kendrick and J. Cole, but they know about Drake. Drake is on the radio all, uh, all day, every day. Like that. those eight people that we saw in Family Feud a couple of weeks ago. They went through a system. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know if you can get to that level without going through... The system. A system. Yeah. Because there's a lot of dope people out there right now with dope music. 
I just don't know who tells the world that this is. They're the one. Yeah. Like we've, we're in this era now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, it's hard to be in an era nowadays. It's like, Drake had an era. Cardi had an era. Yeah. But Cardi went through a system. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's just, I don't know, man. I, I really, I don't know. I don't know who I see holding the torch for hip hop in the next 10, 20 years. I really don't. Who's greater, Mayweather at boxing or Mrs. Hayes at pie making? I still haven't tried your mom's pie. Yo, give me my card, yo. Yes, you uh, have. Let me get my card. Let me get my card that your mom sent me. She told me you were sitting in the what? car with me. Can I have the card, please? Wait, wait, what, 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 what? She sent her, she sent him a thank you. Well, not thank you. I don't know what it was. Well, if you give it to me. Yeah, we could read it live. No. Y'all tripping. Yo, wow. that's, it's not wow. even for you. She pulled it out and the said, The car's no. not even for you. Wow. This is an evil motherfucker Yo, give right him here. back his car, <laughs> yo. Okay? Yo, give him back his car, yo. I got yo. a fresh haircut today, and when I walked in the room, she goes, I don't see it. I don't see it. God, I don't damn, see it. Damn. Actually, I see patches. All like, the what flag the that fuck? this guy gives me, and y'all have the what nerve. The fuck? What did he do to you? <laughs> but no, no, I get out of here. All yeah. I did was walk in the room, and she goes, I don't, I don't see yo, it. Yo, give him his card, yo. I don't yo. see it. Somebody goes, I think Sim goes, okay, haircut. I don't see it. I don't see it. <laughs> Actually, I see patches. Then I sit down, and she's like... What the fuck kind of evil shit is that? Yeah, that's yeah, fucked up. He was feeling good up. about himself, you know what I'm too. Saying? Just got a fresh haircut. Just told the barber, like, damn, boy, nothing like a yeah. fucking fresh haircut. Why would she want that? <laughs> that's just evil for no reason. Yo, give him his card, yo. You know what her name in my phone is? What's that? Little Op. That is an Op. <laughs> that is an Op. Little opera. fucking that's Op. Op behavior right there. Little Op. Can I please have my mama's yo, card? Yo, come on. Okay, if I give it to you, read it exactly read, what it says. I, will, I know she I says, will, no, she I says will. slick stuff in it too. Okay, finally. I'm glad she stopped hiding me. No, no, <laughs> about okay. me. Oh, thank. Okay, thank you. That's a nice card, dear Charlemagne. Thank nice you so card. much for the lovely gift set. Heart, heart, heart. I truly appreciate wow. your thoughtfulness. You always know exactly what I need. That is not what I you am, said. I am enjoying. Yo, you were so rude. I thought you said you didn't read it. I mean. I, I know what she, I was there when she wrote it. I am Bullshit. enjoying the various snacks, especially the olives. Wow. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Don't give my tailor too much grief. And I hope to deliver some pie and cake in the next few months with a smiley face. Thanks again. Mrs. Hayes. Thank you, Mrs. Hayes. God that damn. That was so sweet. She was <laughs> I can't wait to receive the pie and cakes over the next few months with the smiley face. You getting pie and cake? And pie, what does that say right there? Let me oh, see. What does that say? Pie and cake in the next few months with the smiley face. Golly. And, and cake. Pie and, and, and cake. Handwritten. Ooh. And she, the, the handwriting a little shaky. She's nervous, man. Can you relax? She's in love, bro. She so, might be in so love. So what you're saying is you want my dad to fuck you up, too. Calm Two? the fuck down. Why, 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 why am I involved in this? Calm why am the I fuck involved down. in this? And she sprayed perfume Calm on the fuck. it? No, she did. Oh, she did, bro. Oh, she did. Oh, my she God. She did. Both y'all are Ms. married, Ms. Hayes, too. you are the best. You hear me? Okay? Thank Yo, you so much. Crazy. You know, you're right. I don't even need my dad. I'm going to fuck both y'all up. Well, why, why are you mad at me? <laughs> this is a very sweet letter. This is very touching. Okay? Ain't nobody worried about there... female violent protection. <laughs> 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 there is nothing like a person writing you a handwritten note and spraying perfume on it. Like, this, she this, didn't spray no this, fucking this, perfume. That's awful. This was Yo. the middle school move. That was. Come on. That was. It's the middle school move. You write a little letter, spray your little cologne on it. You know what I mean? Mm. What's up? What's up with it? Yes. No, if you're insecure like me, maybe, just the case. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to put it out there. You got to put it out there. Put it out you know there. what I mean? I don't want to get the no. Exactly. I knew when I, I knew at a young age. I'm bringing my dad to the next podcast. <laughs> Yo. I like confrontation. <laughs> <laughs> so does my dad. Listen, I believe it. Listen, <laughs> he should find out. He I, should know. I knew at a young age that you got to give people other options other than yes or no. Because uh, life was a little complicated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would always put yes, no, and maybe mm. in the would you go with me box. Mm. Do you like me box? Mm. You know? And all of them said no. No, nah, I got Whoa. mad yeses and maybes. You ever get pie and cake? Yeah, I got some pie and cake. I got some pie and cake. 
Can we scroll down, Taylor? Oh. Oh. Can we scroll <laughs> you Yo, you know what you are, bro? What? You're a pioneer, bro. That's <laughs> what you are. Yo, I'm a yo, pioneer. You're a pioneer <laughs> right now, my boy. Yeah, you're a pioneer. That's funny. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Taylor really ain't. Yeah. For no reason, little op. Little That's op. That's her name bro. in my fucking phone. <laughs> yeah. Little op. Shit. Making fun of fake teeth. Oh my God. <laughs> Shit. Call me Sean underscore 94 says if you were asked to hold any position in Harris's cabinet, what position would that be? Doggy. <laughs> Scroll up, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> just, just Taylor, just scroll the fuck nah, up. Nah, you wouldn't want to have Lewis, that position. <laughs> you hold Flo, that one. Louis Flo <laughs> 9 says, <laughs> what person, CEO, celebrity, person of influence shocked you most that listens? Oh, to the pod? Oh, mm. it's got to be Ed. Really? Yeah. Nah, Ed didn't shock me. Who shocked you? Probably Jay Shetty. Jay Shetty don't shock me either. See, here's the thing about these people. And these people aren't, that's not even their personas. I just named two people who really are who they are. Yeah. Like, literally. Ed oh. Sheeran is who he is at all times. Yeah. Jay Shetty is really who he is at all times. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't surprise me that Ed listens to Brilliant Idiots or Jay Shetty listens to Brilliant Idiots. What I was more surprised about with Jay Shetty was the breakdown he gave me of Brilliant Idiots. Like he had both of our profiles broken down because he said that I bring out a more serious side of you mm -hmm. and you bring out the more silly side of me yes. and it works. Yeah. He was like, yo, he's like, he's like, he's like I never thought, he's like, he's like, I never thought Schultz was stupid in any way, shape or form, yeah. but he's very intelligent. He literally said that to me. And he was like, I always thought you was funny, but when you were Schultz, you're like really funny. And I was like, oh, he listens for real. Fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, so he he really, like, that's what shocks me. Not, not when somebody says, oh, I, I, I listen to the podcast. When you've got breakdowns of episodes and yeah. personality profiles, that's different mm. to me. It didn't shock me that Ed listened. Um, I, I think it shocked me more that Ed is Ed listens devoutly. Oh, yeah. That's more, it's not like, oh, I've heard it. It's like weekly. Listenership Absolutely. is really cool. One that's, of the biggest music artists of all time. That's my guy. First time I met Ed, I met Ed at the iHeart Music Festival. Bobby Bone introduced me to Ed. And Ed was like, hey, fucking, hey, man, Charlamagne. I watched Charlamagne all the fucking time. This was like 2014, uh, 15. Yeah. And that's been my guy ever since. Yeah. Like, you know, that, I, 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 yeah. He's at the, he was at the Mets uh, Stadium and you pulled up, right? I went there because of him. That was yeah. my daughter's first concert, which yeah. was so weird to me because my daughter's been knowing Ed since she's been like six. Yeah, yeah. So now all of a sudden you an Ed Sheeran fan? Like, we've d had dinner together. Ed's been to my house. Like, yeah. like now it's a big deal. Like, oh, okay. like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Now it's a big deal. That's funny. So it's just like, yeah, it's just, it, yeah. I, I spent, I, I stayed with Ed in his house in fucking. It's not even London. It's on the outside, like two hours outside of London. Did you like, go to his pub? Doesn't he have like a pub? Oh my on god! His house? Yes, like, yes. So he got his own pub. He Explain has his that. own pub. I'm not talking about like a bar. Yeah. Right. Like I got a bar in my. house. He got house. his own structure that is a pub. Oh my god! It's a town, whole other building, and the town can go where it's just him and his. Does he have it open to the town? I don't think he has it open to the town. I think it's just for him and his family. But you lit, you literally have to leave his house. Walk outside or go through like this underground tunnel thing. Yeah. And when you, it's the underground tunnel thing. It's like going down some steps. You walk to like a movie theater, go down a long hallway and it's the pub. But before you walk in the pub, him and all his crew, they got these leather jackets that they wear in the pub. That's fine. <laughs> so they put it on That's and it's an actual pub. Like a a pub. Like yeah. it could be a pub. Like it could be a club. Like, yeah, oh yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's really fly. So yes, a hundred percent. Those rumors are absolutely true. Is it open to pe people in this town? I'm not sure. I don't remember that part. Yeah. I mean, what a great thing to do though. Man, he's just a great guy, man. I like seeing great humans win, man. He's one of them. You know what I mean? That's my fucking guy. Salute to Ed Sheeran. All right, what else Ooh, we got? I like this one. Sam Silve, which had the greatest impact on humanity? Numbers or letters? Letters easily, letters. bro. You don't fuck with math like that. We don't fuck with numbers like that, bro. Nah. We use letters so fucking much, bro. Like, we really don't need much past 10, bro. What? 
Son, I, I was thinking like real, for real, for real, yo. Yo, because because the Muslims always say they invented zero, and it's like, come on, bro. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, that's like you didn't think we knew how much you know pussy we got before. <laughs> You know, <laughs> zeros yeah. do matter when it comes past that number when it's your money. Though. I know, but I'm saying the idea of zero wasn't invented by anybody. Numbers always exist. Maybe they did, we didn't have a sound to describe them, but zero. if you had four coconuts, you just had this many coconuts. Like we knew numbers have always exist. An amount of things always exists. Is zero a number? Nobody starts with zero. If I tell you to count right now from the beginning, you're going to say one. Yeah. Zero is kind of like foreskin. You can have it, but you don't necessarily need it. <laughs> if somebody started, if you like count to 10, somebody like zero, one, two, three, you'd be like, that's a little weird, which I'm sure girls do when they first see that uncircumcised penis. Yeah. But you'd be like, huh. But you're not tripping. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, zero, that makes sense. Right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine. And shouldn't it be zero skin? Oh my God. <laughs> zero only matters when you're trying to subtract it. Why does it start at four, the skin? <laughs> Next question. Scroll down immediately. <laughs> Scroll down right now, please. I'm, I'm serious. Scroll down further. <laughs> Scroll mean? down. Asking idiots, baby. Yeah, we... Let's stop and pay some bills, man. And I want to talk to y'all real quick, man. Let's have a real conversation, okay? We've all been there feeling like we're burning cash with those rent checks. It's frustrating, right? But here's the deal. Built. Okay, built rewards has figured out a way to make rent more rewarding. Say goodbye to the money bonfire and hello to a renter's revolution with built. Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Even if you're still rocking the old school rent check vibes, built rewards has got your back. They'll mail the check for you. It's like having a personal rent paying assistant. Okay, every month, pay your rent and watch the built points roll in. Use points to jet off on a dream vacation. Put your points toward a flight or hotel stay with 500 plus airlines and 700,000 plus hotels and properties. Use your points to sweat it out. Redeem your points to book fitness studio classes. You can also use your points toward a future rent payment or toward a future down payment on a home. Pay rent hassle free through the built rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Built points have been consistently ranked the highest value point currency by the point sky and bank rate earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash idiots that's joinbilt.com slash idiots make sure to use our url so they know we sent you joinbuilt.com slash idiots to start earning points with your rent payments today now let's get back to the show all right guys let's take a break for a second we got to say thank you to squarespace for supporting this week's episode of the podcast squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up, tailored to your brand or business and optimized for every device. Easy launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website starting point and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine included in any new Squarespace site. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to Squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's get back to the show. Cully Cullen says, who are the most trusted news sources on politics? This is the first time I've decided to, decided to what? To vote, I guess. Who are the most trusted news sources on politics? None of them. No, yeah, nobody in mainstream media. None of them. With you, you know, nobody in mainstream media. Um, it's just some weird shit going on and nobody's really being honest. People are afraid yeah. to have, you know, uh, actual objective conversations. Everybody has picked sides. Nobody wants to offend. You know, I, I, I did Jake Tapper this week. How was? It was good. And, you know, Deadline, well, I did it last week and Deadline ran an article 
Because, you know, Jake asked Angela Rye a question where he was like, you know, um, I think, I, did I talk about this last episode? I might, maybe I did. I don't know. But Jake, well, I, Jake asked me about the book, Get Honest or Die Lying. And he he said, uh, he asked me about a quote my father told me where my father was like, you're not lying to me, you're lying to yourself. And he asked me to give some examples of, of you know, what I'm seeing in the media, any examples in the media now of that. And the example I gave him was about how people reacted towards after the Trump shooting. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because we, 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 we started telling ourselves lies about what we've been seeing mm. all of these years, mm. which you, you, you should condemn political violence yeah. and you should have sympathy for somebody who almost lost their life. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But when you hear people like Mike Johnson say, everyone has to tone down the rhetoric. Who is everyone? You got to define that. And then when you see J.D. Vance say, this is the Democrats' rhetoric that caused this, knowing that you've said the same exact things, knowing that Nikki Haley has said the same exact things, knowing that all Republicans have said the same exact things, you got to have a conversation about the whole totality of all of that. You can't just point the finger at somebody, and you got to point the finger at Trump. Mm. So I said that the media wasn't honest with themselves about that, and they volunteered those lies to the American people. Yeah. And I don't think that does anybody any for good. For profit. 100% for profit. I just think I just think we do everybody a disservice. So honestly, to answer your question, Cully Cullen, I don't know who are the most trusted news sources on politics because everybody has an agenda. That's the problem. What do you when, guys get your news? I listen to everything. I watch Fox, I watch yeah. CNN, I watch MSNBC, I listen to podcasts, you know, like Pod Saves America, I listen to Native Land podcasts. I watch, I, I listen to everything. I, I listen to Republicans, I listen to Democrats. I try to listen to everybody. Yeah. I just do. Like, that's just my mindset. I want to always be like, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't have a problem saying that's a good point. And I also don't have a problem saying that's some bullshit, regardless of whose side it's on. Yeah. So I try to pay attention to everything. But you, know it, I, yeah. you know who I would say is my most trusted source? Me personally? John Stewart and Bill Maher. Mm. I like John Stewart and Bill Maher. Mm. I really do. Because I feel like John Stewart, you know... Really, the Daily Show as a whole, but Jon Stewart is so objective. Yeah. And he tells you about all angles, mm -hmm. right? And Bill Maher does the same thing. Bill Maher will bring different voices on. Yo, if there's an episode of Bill Maher I want y'all to watch, go watch the episode where he had Kevin McCarthy on as a guest, and he had Bakari Sellers and, and Ben Shapiro on mm -hmm. the panel. That was fan-fucking-tastic, yo. It was, it was two weeks ago. Fan-fucking-tastic. To me, that is how dialogue should happen in America. Hmm. Kevin McCarthy on there, Bill Maher challenging him, right? Then Bakari and Ben, two totally different sides of the spectrum, but listening to each other, agreeing to disagree, calling each other out respectfully when they thought what the person said was some bullshit. It was just a productive conversation, hmm. and I enjoyed it. To me, that's what... You know, dialogue should be in this country. That's what I, that's what I want to see us getting back to. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And you need someone like John, which both sides respect. Like, they know they can't be foolish around him. Absolutely. They can't say some dumb shit because he can call it out. He's that sharp. Man, that's what I love. One of the, one of the best things I hear when I'm on any of these networks, whether it's Fox, CNN, MSNBC, they all will say he objectively critiques Tells what it is. both sides. Yeah. And even if I do... If I say I'm supporting, you know, Vice President Kamala Harris for president, you think I'm going to stop being critical of her because of that? Yeah. <laughs> no. I think that's what will happen. I'm going to critique the person I'm supporting more. Yeah. I think that's what will happen as we get closer to the election is that people will get more uh, tribal. And they'll just be like, whatever this side, whatever your side says, uh, we agree with because this is life or death. And that's what matters in this election. And then we stop critiquing our own sides. That's not right. And, uh, and that's where you lose... That's where you lose the game. Yep. And that's where you also lose your influence on your politicians. Yeah. Once they know that you're going to be team blue or team red no matter what, that's then right. they can say whatever they need. That's right. You got to hold them accountable. If you are if you are a liberal and you lie to people about liberals, they won't believe you when, when you, you tell, tell them the about Republicans, right? Oh, and if you're even a that. And if you're yeah. a Republican who lies to people about Republicans... They're not going to believe you when you tell them the truth about Democrats. Mm. No, no, maybe they will. I'm lying. They, they, they will. Both, both. <laughs> they, nah, they definitely will. No, but you, I just think you got to be objective. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't care. Like, I'm the type of person, 
I'm going to hold you accountable. If I see some shit I don't like, I'm going I'm to say it. The other side won't believe you. And I think one of the things that John has is he has the faith of both sides. I think so. I think so. both sides listen, hear John talk and they're like, okay, I, I do think this guy tells the truth. I might not like it sometimes, but I do think he tells the truth. And I think Mar to a certain extent as well, where they're like, because he'll do things that really enrage Democrats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like and, tell the truth. Yeah, exactly. And it should. And, and you know, Mar is a perfect example of what you just said, because Mar is liberal. Mar yeah. is a person that's, I'm a vote blue no matter who. Mar is a, I, I'm a vote for Joe Biden. Whether if he, he literally said, I would vote for Joe Biden if his head was in a jar. But yet they still respect him because he's going to tell the he's truth shit about all over them. Him when James they Carville. James Carville is another person I fucking listen to. Yeah, James Carville is legit. But he's a liberal, but he holds liberals His wife is also conservative, so you got to hear that shit. You got to hear the best arguments from them all the time. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, those those are people that I that I that I uh I personally fuck with. Um, I think that's it, guys. Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz, man. If you listen to this podcast, as always, thank you. Um, and if you listen to the podcast and you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the brilliant in this podcast. Thank you for listening.